I use the Yoast SEO plugin on WordPress websites I have that are getting tens of thousands of visitors a day. It is my favorite and I think the best WordPress SEO plugin out there. So I'm gonna give you a little overview of the Yoast SEO plugin and show you the features you need to know about and how to use it to get the most impact on your SEO for your WordPress website. So now real quick, let's just kind of talk about what it does uh, at a high level here, right? If you search something, you see these results. And in here, what you see is typically, and I say typically because Google is changing, uh, is typically a meta title and then a meta description in the result below it. And this one's my company down here. So uh, meta title, meta description below it. Now, typically, there are cases, and these cases are becoming more and more prevalent where Google fetches the content from your website and just displays it there, whatever they think is best, not necessarily what you tell them, but still, it's still helpful for SEO purposes. And it also allows you to control what search engines index on your website. So a lot of WordPress websites will have a problem with files being indexed that shouldn't be indexed. Yoast helps you control those. So at this point, it's important for me to note that just because you install Yoast SEO plugin and get it set up and running, it doesn't mean that you are going to get a ton of freaking traffic. You still have to publish content and promote content and look for a link somewhere around this video. I think I'm gonna make a video on this. You still have to publish good content and promote your good content to actually get results and get SEO. Once you've got, you know, a little bit of content and promotion going on, you're kind of building this synergy, this helps guide your SEO process. So this is not like a plug and play. There is no plug and play to SEO but simply this refines and guides what you've got on your page. So let's head back into my WordPress install here. And if you just installed the Yoast plugin, you're probably gonna end up at something like this, which is the configuration wizard. Uh, I've already installed it on my site. This kind of goes through some step-by-steps to get you up and rolling really quickly. First thing it's asking if your site is live or under construction. If it's under construction, it'll apply a no index tag to your entire site so that search engines don't index it and people don't find it until it's ready. Uh, my site is live, ready to be indexed. We're gonna next that. Then the site type, uh, you can select you know, what it is. This isn't huge for SEO. I don't think this actually has anything to do with SEO. They could put some tag on your website that, um, you know, schema tag that would tell Google something, but even if they're doing that, I'm not sure if they are or not, it's still largely irrelevant. I think this is primarily for Yoast to gather data. Uh, then here you can put in all of your information. There is a little bit of research out there that shows that Google weights websites higher if they've got a reputable author. So if you're an expert um, and you're regularly published on, sites that publish on you or you publish on are gonna get more weighting in search results. So this would be good to fill out here. I personally am not big on social profiles. So um, you know my social profile is essentially my website. So I don't use this stuff. You can set your logo in here as well. Uh, this may be used in search engine data. And my gosh, one thing I'm shocked to see here is MySpace URL. Who uses this? That hasn't been a thing for, well, 16 years, since 2005 at this point. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna go on to next, and you can omit all this stuff if you don't wanna do it. Then it's gonna ask about search engine visibility. First thing are pages and posts. Should search engines show the pages and posts and search results? For most of us, that will be a yes by default. You can always eliminate them later on a specific basis. But then you get these other two things down here. We see Thrive symbols and Thrive light boxes. These are things that are kind of grouped into or lumped into the page slash post category or taxonomy inside of WordPress. But Yoast is detecting, well, these things probably are not really pages slash posts. That's why it's asking if they want to show them. So Thrive symbols are basically um, chunks of content that can be repurposed on multiple pages in Thrive, Th Thrive themes, which is what I use. And then Thrive light boxes are pop-up windows. And it's asking, should it show them in the search results? Well, that's a no for me. And you might have all kinds of other stuff depending on uh, what's been done to your WordPress install and what your WordPress theme is. So you'll probably want to know index those things. And then... Uh, multiple authors, this just decides whether it's going to no index uh, your author pages to prevent duplicate content. Title settings, you put in your website name, choose a spacer. I personally like to use the pipe, but you can use hyphen, whatever it needs to be, whatever you want it to be. There's no right or wrong answer. Remember, SEO is all about the content and promotion. Um, then help Yoast improve SEO, that basically tracking. Doesn't really matter what you select there, continue learning, right? So now they're just trying to funnel you into everything they've got. Okay, cool, we are done. Okay, so um, if you are coming from a previous SEO plugin, you'll see a notification here that allows it to fetch in 
all of the other data from that previous SEO plugin if you're transferring. Otherwise, let's keep moving on though um, to features. You know, you can use the SEO analysis feature where this uh, offers suggestions to improve the text of your SEO. I don't really like using this. I just publish good content. Um, I, I don't rely on machines or kind of things like that. Readability analysis. So this is giving you a lot of stuff here. Um, now my favorite one, one that's important here is XML sitemaps. This is very important. Now an XML sitemap is not going to mean that your content ranks instantly. But what it does is it lets you Google know that you have new content very quickly and get it indexed faster, right? So when you turn it on, you'll have this little link here where you can see the XML sitemap. And here's my XML sitemap. Now what I can do is then go into Search Console. So if we go over to Google Search Console here, And then we can come over here to, as I believe, coverage. It's been a while since I've had to do this. Nope, it's not coverage. Sitemaps. Duh, that makes sense, right? And then right here, we can put in the sitemap address. And then Google will come here, fetch the sitemap, and see what's new on your website and things get indexed faster. Um, I think this is an incredibly big help. The sooner you get something out there, the better it does. You don't want to wait for Google to find it and index it on your own. So in XML sitemaps, still incredibly important. You know, although Google does crawl websites very quickly these days, it still helps things, okay? Um, you got a bunch of other features down here, most of which probably aren't going to be used. For integrations, you can integrate with SEM Rush or Write. I'm not sure what SE what Write is, but I know what SEM Rush is. It's a good tool. Um, it helps you track things if you're using it. Use it if not. Now down here, uh, this is where you can integrate with your webmaster tools. You can get your results inside of Yoast. So to do that, you just follow the steps right here. You get a verification code and you put it right there. So that'll that'll let you get set up on. Um, Google Search Console without going through the Google Search Console process. So it's kind of an easy step. So I recommend doing that. Um, and you may need to do this before you use the XML sitemaps and then come back if you don't already have your, um, if you don't already have Search Console set up, set up Search Console first and then go back to it. Now let's talk about search appearance because this is really what things are all about here. Here's where you can start creating the tags and customizing the no index tags for your pages. So by default, you start on your home page, and this is what would be in the actual search results for your home page if it were to show up and you put it in here, customize it like so. Uh, next up is content type. So this is going to say by default, should we show posts in search results, right? Yes or no. Show SEO settings for posts, show or hide. And what this is talking about is right here, if you come into a new post, like you're gonna create a new post. Boom, right there, it's talking, it's saying, should we show this here? Now this uh, will let you override everything else. So let's just keep going back to content types before we come into this. Um, you know, a bunch of stuff here, there's your, you know, light boxes, we're hiding those, the pages, yes, and so you can edit this stuff. Media, this is an incredibly powerful one. What WordPress does is WordPress creates a page for every media thing that you upload, every media item, every, uh, whether that's a blog, or not blog, but a, um, an image, uh, could be a podcast, audio copy, could be a video file, right? For every file you upload into your media gallery or onto a page or post, which then puts it into your media gallery, WordPress creates a page and you really don't want those pages to get indexed in theory. Uh, when you index all those pages, it could add a thousand pages to a, pay, a website that's only got a hundred pages, right? And now your SEO juice, quote unquote, has to flow over a thousand pages, when in reality, you really only want it to flow over the hundred pages that matter. So uh, what this does is it redirects the URLs right to the actual file. So rather than showing a page which has your image on it, it'll go right to the JPEG file metaphorically. So typically I leave that as yes. Actually all the time I leave that as yes. And then taxonomies, categories and tags. Do you want to show these in search results? That's up to you on the categories and tags. Personally, I don't like doing them. Um, and then there's formats, symbols. There's all kinds of stuff, right? That you can hide here. So 
Typically, I like to, you know, whittle out all of the junk and only let my good content show in the search results, and Yoast makes that easy. And then there's finally your archives, author archives, etc. Um, I'm actually going to set that to no, since I'm going through this here. So we'll set that to no. And then breadcrumbs, uh, things, you know, spaces between, or the separators between words and stuff in your title. By default, you'll probably be pretty good here. Social lets you put in all your social profiles. This makes it easier for outlinking. And um, that's really it. Yoast does have some other features where it goes through your content. But again, I'm all about publishing high quality content. Now let's go back to that post editor, right, which you see right here. So um, if my the title of my post is my new post... And we'll just call it Lorem Ipsum. This very horrible blog post here. You'll see that this is f um, pulling up what it's going to show up in the search results, which is really cool. It's showing up a mobile preview, right? So let's just say I want to give it a custom title. My number one new post on SEO, right? And then down here, I can customize my URL. Um, and we'll just call it SEO, right? So that's what it's going to be. And that'll be mywebsite.com slash SEO and then description. And then in here, we'll just put learn the best strategies for 2020 SEO, right? So that's going to customize it. And you could stick some keywords in here. I'm not too big on going um, gung-ho on keyword over optimization. But if you did have them, you'd want to put them in there. But ideally, you want to make this so that the user is inclined to click on it. You want to make this so that the user, or so that it's optimized for the user. Don't do anything for keywords. Optimize strictly for the users, and that's what you can do here. And you can see that preview, and then save it. Now here, Yoast will give you the readability. Um, you know, give you some little insight on whether or not it's good content. I don't use this stuff because I don't use this stuff because. I feel that, you know, there's really nothing that can ultimately tell by an algorithm, at least not, you know, in Yoast, whether this is good content or bad content. I just make good content on high volume topics and publish it, right? And I don't really worry about all of these technicals and such, right? I just let the users and their signals indicate to Google, you know, Google's algorithms decide, you know, once I publish something whether it's good or bad, you know, so I follow some basic principles out, which I'm going to cover in another video, but overall I publish good content on high volume topics and then click publish. And then finally here, before we wind it down, uh, you have the same features on your pages. So just like you can do that on posts right here on pages, you have the exact same Yoast functionality. And there's a couple things I overlooked here. Um, SEO analysis, is it ad related key phrase cornerstone content? You can use this to market as cornerstone if it's a good long piece. Don't really use that. But advanced, say that you're publishing a page that's just a landing page. You could come in here and no follow it, or not no follow, but no index it, right? And that way that page does not get indexed. Uh, and then likewise down here, and should search engines follow links on this page, no. So if you're, you know, linking out to a lot of other pages or to a lot of affiliate content, you would want to no index it. So that's it. That's how simple and easy it is to use Yoast. You know, like I said in the very beginning, Yoast is not a magic tool that's going to propel you to the search engines, but it does help you. It lets you kind of narrow down your content and refine and customize what content the search engines could find and let you kind of guide the search engine crawlers around your website. And it lets you customize the meta description and title um, and then also easily create a sitemap. So that's Yoast, guys. If you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback on it, drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you found that insightful. That's a wrap on this video, and I'm signing off.